welcome back to this Porsche 914 build. For a change, this is my project, this is a mate's project. He actually brought it over to try and fix an exhaust leak and run issues. And as it turned out, there was a little exhaust stud, really loose. The manifold was just shaking around because it would come back loose. And it turned out that it had history before of leaking. So somewhere along the line, some of these actually glued in the stud. So unfortunately, to get that sorted, we're gonna take the head off. So that involves dropping the engine. First thing we're going to do, definitely disconnect the battery and now it's got these really quick release tabs. Okay, they're really good. As it was an ex-race vehicle, that may have been why. While I'm up here, I'm going to disconnect the fuel system. I'm going to take these carburetors off. It looks like it's got dual webbers. Just going to put a bolt in there. See, I'm going to go and find a bigger bolt than that one. Slightly wider diameter bolt. Because it's running webbers. It's got a little bit of play on there. It'll be interesting to see how that relates to the, the actual pedal. And it all comes back together. So I'm going to disconnect that from there, which looks like a little side bolt that's been pinched. And then I'm going to undo the carburetors. And we'll just undo the cable from there and then see how these two disconnect because we're in the carburetors. Again, again, I just found that a little bit loose. See if I can, I'm, I'm going to remove it anyway because it's just in the way. Now that's unthreaded. That all runs nice and loose. It's a nice solid bar that runs in between there. I do actually like the finish on that. But let's get these carburetors off. Let's see if Ratchet Spanner will get on it. No. Let's see if this will just wiggle loose now. Pops out, uh, there are just little ball joints, dead simple setup, a bit of hexagonal bar, not simple enough. I've already put cleaned unused bags just in the inlets, just to keep anything out, any water. Anything. I'm going to undo the breather part that's on there, just leave that to one side. It's got an old catch tank. It's always good to say that it's been looked after. It was quite a loose fit, to be honest. And there's one that goes down to the bottom, so I'll leave that on the engine. So the only other little things, that, there's a bit of wiring that's unused. enough to, to remove there's one little earth strap and then there's the three connections for the dizzy so I'm going to mark these up and just pull them off just so I know where they go there's four in this case eight mil bolts so one either side of the number plate on one either side just holding this lower valance on it comes off just to allow that a little bit more clearance that much which is all it takes because I'm only planning to drop the engine enough to get one of the cylinder heads off possibly both I'm gonna to have to inspect both now that it's coming apart I'm going to take the exhaust off as it is in situ and just drop the gearbox and everything else Whereas I think most people would actually drop it with the exhaust. It's a little bit more work, but I'm not going to be moving it off into an engine stand. It's going to stay on the, the stand and put it on. It looks simple enough because it's a four into one with slight, slight, slight movement in it. So I'm going to do that. 
and also while I'm here I've actually found this to be loose as well so that's coming off by hand I think it said there's, there's problems with the speed I haven't not driven it I don't actually know so that looks good be interesting to see whether there's any direct relation so that's quite loose don't know whether it's a converter or what so I might investigate that a bit further but on this one there's only a couple of 13s that look like you hold it on and on each collector so we look there's quite a good race system on there or at least a four into one it's quite a tidy system design I don't think this gearbox is quite right is this a 901 gearbox could be because it changes direction it's got the 901 layout only one way to find out let's, let's get her out and of course we've got the earth strap here which you need to undo why they call it a cone screw. So the one just also feels loose. So I don't really know what to do with that until I actually take it off. But it needs to be right. So I've removed some of the tinware just just from the back. Got it all loose. Come over it. Disconnected. Disconnected part of the loom that went there. So I think that's alternator wiring. I have no idea what that is, but we'll just say, yeah. Must go to some sensors. Uh, it actually goes to Dizzy. Must go. It's probably the reverse light sensors. Not really too sure, to be honest. That's the engine wiring. I have noticed I've disconnected this this race connector battery, and there's so much water coming out of it, which can't be good. It's actually coming from inside the terminals as well, and so we might have to revise that. So for now, so the exhaust system's off. Lower valance. A lot of the tin is actually loose. I need to look into whether that needs to to fully come off to to drop I don't think it does looking at it I could be wrong all the electrical bits are all disconnected all I've got to do is give myself a second jack and a little trolley to put it on which I've got a little trolley hopefully it's finally going to come into use before I pick, pack all these bits up let's have a little scoop round and see where it's up to so we have one very nice looking exhaust there's the rear valance let's have a little look underneath They've got some really nice mounts there. I'm going to loosen those off tomorrow. I believe everything is all disconnected as it should be. I actually did look up. This is a standard item. It's just quite trick how it does that. So this must be a revised 901 gearbox. Probably with the diff the other way. As it's fitted the other way than the 912s it would have been in. I'm not going to undo the valve covers until I drop it. I'll, I'll take that exhaust off anyway because I've, I've took the others off the battery and earth cables to the secondary battery and the secondary charge system so it's looking almost all there this is where having kids does play dividends you've got nice soft towels all over the place so everything is all loose that's all disconnected we're pretty much ready to go as outlined in the Pelican Parts how-to, it tells you to put it on a furniture cart, whatever a furniture cart is on wheels. But I had a nice sturdy steel framework, and then I went to go and pick that up, and it looks like I've already pinched the wheels off it. I know exactly where they are now. They're on a pallet, holding my car up. That's a whole different project. Let's not mention that one just yet. So I'm going to have to ablib and make something because that's what we do so I've got two slightly older jacks which I've never 
which are now going to create a little lift fetch. And if, and if it doesn't fully lift, I haven't really lost anything. No, that makes sense there and there. Okay, let's, let's re drill two little holes. We'll just make a little something. So I'm almost ready to drop the engine. Just those magic four bolts. I'm done everything all up the top. Hopefully it's gonna go very, very smoothly. Now I'm following two methods. One that Ian Carr, who's also on YouTube, so I'll link to him somewhere in the description below. And also on Pelican Parts. Pelican Parts, if you're into your Porsches, has had a wealth of experience thrown at it over the years. So I also trust their method as well. I'm going to undo these by holding the road wheel, not particularly tight. It's very similar to an early VW version apart from they've dropped two of the bolts and it's got a similar sort of thing. This looks like it's a little bit more of either a cardboard or thing. Whereas the V-Dub's got a, a rubber gasket and the outside of this flange just goes over. But yeah, that's be interesting to see. Oh, see how wet or dry that is. That doesn't look too bad. As I drop the engine, or should I say, keep the engine stationary and lift the chassis up, we've got to keep looking down here just to make sure that everything is all in one piece, and nothing's binding, nothing's catching, that nothing's caught or in the way. Right, we've raised that up quite a bit. Still got a way to go on the jacks, but I just want to sort of level out to see how much room we've actually got. I'm going to lift the, the drive shaft up and over. I think that will just about clear. Maybe just take it up a little bit. So I can see why taking off this balance makes a big difference because that's, that would have sat back here. But it almost looks ready to roll out. I've got it pretty much balanced on these the makeshift stand, all right. engine out of that one. Big thanks to both Ian Carr on his YouTube channel, links in the description below, and also Pelican Parts for having a really good how-to. That's probably made it a little bit easier. I know it's a straightforward engine, I can manage to get it out, but sometimes just doing that little bit of homework makes it a lot more easier, and you can sort of spot some of those little pitfalls that could quite easily happen. But I'm definitely going to strip down the heads off these, give it an overall visual inspection, don't want to take the engine apart because we've got no reason to take the engine apart apparently it has had an engine rebuild it'll be interesting to have a look in these heads to see what's different about them but just looking at it i can definitely tell it's gas flowed looking at it i do like gas flowed it's got got quite a nice finish to it 
So if you want to see when that comes out, subscribe now, tap the bell notification, share it with somebody else if you know you, they're into this sort of stuff. Even though I'd much rather be messing around with water cooled. The camera's currently sat on a Mark 1 Golf, which I want to be messing around with, as well as a Corrado TDI engine swap, which I want to get finished, get back on the road. So thanks very much for watching. Ta-da!